Hey everybody, good morning and welcome back to Mad Horse Barbecue. My name is Brian yet again, if you had forgotten because it's been about three months I think since I made a video. Um, just haven't had a whole lot of time. I've uh, been working on renovating the house, got a kid due in about a month. So if I hadn't been working on the house during the weekends, I have been out competing uh, with my buddy Darren. He let me join his team, Ash Kick and Barbecue this year and I'll be with him again next year. Uh, and you know, I just haven't had enough time to shoot videos. But happy to say we're going to be back at it again today and we're going to be shooting a baby back rib video on my 55 gallon gateway drum. Uh, I'm going to run this drum the same exact way that we run them in competition, meaning that we're going to be turning and burning and cooking these hot and fast. No deflector plate. Uh, we prefer the flavor you get right off the, you know, like when the meat drips off the coals and comes back up, it gives it really good flavor. Uh, you get a nice sizzle and pop on your meat and, uh, you know, I'll kind of show that to you as it's happening. Um, but basically this is a... It's a very simple method to cook ribs, but it does require some attention. Um, you know, if I were doing this on a pellet grill, I could set it to 300 because that's what we're going to be cooking at today and I could walk away and I know that pellet grill would stay at 300. Uh, these gateway drums, once you kind of learn how to use them, uh, check out my video on how to control temps on your drum smoker and it goes over how I run these. But once you learn how to use these, uh, they're fairly easy. Um, and 300 is just, you know, needle straight up. It can be a little north. Uh, I don't like it being a little south. If it gets a little hot, it gets a little hot. It just, it just speeds the cook up. So, um, obviously we're gonna be using Blue's Hog Lump. I already have a full basket of Blue's Hog Lump. Uh, this cook probably only take about three hours. Um, and just every time I run a drum smoker, one tip I think uh, that helps out is I always run a full basket of lump. Uh, I think it cooks a little different when you only run a half a basket. Uh, again, that's just personal preference. So uh, all the products we're going to be using today are from Butcher Barbecue. I am a brand ambassador for them. So make sure you go out and check out Butcher Barbecue. Uh, and remember to always trust your butcher. So now without further ado, I think first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this drum going. So I'll bring you in and I'll show you how to do that. All right, guys, at the gateway, you can see I got a full basket of lump charcoal and I got two tumbleweed starters down at the bottom. Typically, I like starting these with Weber wax cubes, but I am out of Weber wax cubes. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get those tumbleweeds lit. And you can see that I have both intakes, boom and bop, wide open. Go ahead, light them up. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna leave this burn uh, cover off, intakes wide open, probably for, we'll just say in between 10 and 20 minutes. Sometimes the coals are lit enough after about 10, sometimes it takes a full 20. Um, this is a little easier to run when you start uh, a little lower and bring the temp up slow compared to just shooting it up right away. But um, yeah, we kind of just play this one by eye. So when I close this back down, I'll kind of show you what the cold bed looks like. But while this is doing, or while this is burning, we're going to go ahead and get the ribs ready. All right, got our two racks of baby backs here. Uh, these are just uh, regular old Prairie Fresh baby back ribs. Um, the grocery store in the town I live in uh, had them, and it's kind of a rarity for them to have Prairie Fresh. So uh, they didn't have spares, so they had baby backs. So we're going to do baby backs today. Uh, first things first, most, time, most of the time when you buy your ribs, uh, they do have a membrane on them. Uh, I always remove that membrane in the easiest way. And the way that I like to do it is I just take a piece of paper towel, see if there's a corner worked up. If there is, I kind of just put my paper towel on it, grab it. One, same thing, try to work the corner up, see if there is one already. And two. And then we're just gonna kind of turn these over, maybe clean them up a little bit. All right, guys, rubs we're gonna use are both by Butcher. We're gonna be using, and I apologize for the sun coming in, but uh, we're gonna be using the Honey Rub and the Maple Rub. Gonna go on with the Honey Rub first. Uh, the Honey Rub was actually designed uh, to rehydrate and soak into the meat really quick. Uh, so it, you know, it kind of penetrates really deep, gives that meat really good flavor, uh, as well as it, uh, you know, like I said, it dissolves really quick. So it kind of more or less kind of makes a good binder for anything else you might want to put on top. So we're gonna go with the Honey Rub first. Uh, this is the number one rub on the planet. Uh, we do use this in competition. Um, I'm not going to tell you what meat's on, but you could probably guess. So, we're going go on with a decent coat of honey. We're not looking to bury it, but looking to get a good coat on. Now, pat it in. And then we're going to come back, put the maple rub. And, uh, you know, if you're like a yellow mustard binder kind of person, or olive oil, or cooking spray, or whatever, you want to use a binder, you go right ahead and use a binder. Uh, I typically don't really use binders on pork anymore just because I think once you take it out of the cryo and you pat it dry it's still plenty damp from that so that kind of acts as a binder so let's so get the bone side how we want it we're going to flip it over get the meat side and same thing we're going to go on with the honey first as daddy Malcolm would say honey for the money sorry 
ahead, pat it in. And back with the maple. We'll be good. We're gonna let these sit out until they're time to throw on. So we'll uh, pick back up when we're closing the gateway down. All right, gateway's been running probably for about 12 minutes. You can see we got a nice hot coal bed. Might've got a little hot, but it'll be fine. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and close it down, open up the chimney, and I'm gonna leave it just like that for now. While once we get close to 300, um, you'll see why I didn't put the racks in pretty much because I'm gonna put, we're gonna use two racks. One's gonna have a water pan on it, but before we put the water pan rack on, we're gonna put the wood on and we're not gonna throw the wood on till right before we throw the meat on. So once this thing gets closer to 300, um, I'm obviously I'm gonna start closing these down. Uh, like I said, watch my how to control your drum smoker video if you wanna get some tips and tricks on how to do that. But once we get closer to 300 and it's time to throw the meat on, we will pick back up. All right, we're about up to 300. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the intakes down to about that much. Go ahead, get the lid popped off. Got one chunk of cherry, one, one chunk of hickory. We're gonna put it right on the hot coals. Gonna get our first grade in on the middle pegs. Gonna get our half pan in or quarter pan or whatever. So we're gonna have a hot side and a cool side on this grill if need be. Two bottles of water. Did I have to use a bottle of water at home? No, but it was in the garage, so I grabbed it. One. Two. And we're gonna get our main rack on. And then we're gonna go right on with the ribs. The backs are a little bigger than what I'm used to. So we're gonna do one right over to coal. And the other one's gonna start right over our water pan. We're gonna close it down. Now the name of the game is keeping this thing right around 300. Like I said, if I go a little above 300, I'm never really that concerned. I don't obviously want to get it with the ribs. I don't want to get it peaked um, much higher than probably like 325-ish, you know, because there is, for one, there is some sugar in this rub and sugar will burn. But uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I got my uh, Thermalworks time stack here. Uh, I like running these at comps. Uh, top timer, just going to be a count up timer, counting how long the ribs have been on for. And we're going to let these go 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, we're going to rotate them, uh, meaning that we're going to pretty much rotate at 180. So the, the rack that's right over to coal is gonna go over to water pan. So when we rotate, we will pick back up. All right, time stack is going off, been on for 20 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and give these ribs a turn. Put the lid back on, let them go for another 20 minutes. All right, another 20 minutes is up. Go ahead, take a peek at the ribs. Starting to get some nice color. We'll go ahead and give them a rotate. And I'm gonna put a touch more rub on them. Gonna go on with more of the honey. Looking good. Go ahead and take a peek at the bottom of these. Starting to get some nice color. So. Let these go for another 20 and uh, pick back up. All right, we're back. I decided to go 10 minutes here just because I'm not going to do another 20 20 because I'm going to have these flipped over probably within the next 10 minutes or so. But take another peek at these. Starting to get some really nice, good color. Uh, see if we can see that sizzle I'm talking about. I don't know if you can see it in the sun, but you can kind of see how it's sizzling and popping and nice, nice color on the back side of that. So we'll go ahead and rotate this 180 again. Take a peek at this one. Probably let this go for another 10 and then we'll be ready to flip it over to the other side. So when we do uh, our first flip, we'll pick back up. And yeah, you have to hit that for it to close properly. No, you don't, but I just do. All right, we're back. At this point, we've been on for exactly one hour. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, take a peek at the ribs. Nice color, give them a 180 rotate first. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna carefully flip these over. Oh yeah, nice color on the bottom side. Flip them over, cook them meat side down and let them go for about, uh, we'll probably do like 15 minutes every turn. So uh, we'll pick back up in 15 minutes. All right, another 15 minutes have gone by. Let's go ahead, open her up and give it a rotate 180. 
And then I'm guessing probably in about, probably it might be the next 15 minutes we might be ready to wrap these. So go ahead and close this down. Let it go for another 15. Uh, one quick note too. Um, these times for these cooks, so you know, I did 20 and 20 and 10 and 10, and now I'm doing 15 and 15. Uh, I'm getting those times strictly based on how the meat looks to me. Uh, meaning that uh, when I do these ribs a day, and typically when I do ribs, I'm always gonna cook them till I get good color, uh, and that rub is kind of set on it, and then I'm gonna wrap it in foil till they're tender. Uh, it's the same method I'm using today. So these times I'm getting is because I think the ribs color-wise will look good to me, um, and that's how we're getting those times. So I could run this cook 10 days in a row, and I might do this 10 different ways. It just depends on, you know, it depends on the meat, it depends on the coal, the environment you're cooking in. Uh, so if you're following along at home and you're writing down these exact, geez, and you're writing down these exact times, uh, it might get you close, but I would just encourage you to, you know, cook the color, and then if you're gonna wrap it, wrap the tender. So cook the color, wrap the tender. All right, we're back. Ribs have been on for about an hour and a half now, uh, about an hour with the bones down. Now we've been on for a half hour with the meat side down. Let's go ahead, take a peek quick. Let's see if I can see that. Fizz I'm talking about. Looking pretty good, starting to get a little dark on me, I think. Um, but they look, I don't know, that's about perfect, I think. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna throw these in foil, starting to get some nice drawback on the ribs. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get these things thrown in some foil. I just had this there holding the foil down. We're just gonna put it in a foil meat side down. Um, I don't think these are gonna be on for all that much longer. They're starting to feel pretty good. Uh, if you wanted to know uh, internal temp on these, let's play the guessing game. I'm gonna guess we're probably 190. We'll see. Yeah, well, 200. They feel pretty darn good so i bet yeah these are done in about 20 minutes but what we're gonna go ahead and do is double wrap them in foil and we're not gonna put anything in the foil with it put them right back on the grill meat side down actually what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put them both over the pan because this fire is gonna get hot so close this thing up let them sit on there for 10 minutes and we're gonna rotate after that. All right, 10 minutes is up. Give it a rotate. Let it go for another 10 and uh, these are probably gonna be about ready to sauce. So we'll pick back up then. All right, another 10 minutes have passed. Uh, these ribs have been on uh, the gateway for a total of one hour and 50 minutes. Um, getting these done, getting these done quick. Well, let's go ahead and temp them and give them a feel yep temp or they feel really good with the probe nice little jiggle to them oh yeah yeah we're gonna call these done so I'm gonna go ahead and get these things pulled off quick get my water pan pulled out Get the drum closed down. I'm gonna get these things pulled out of the foil and I'm gonna throw them back on the grill. So uh, I will pick back up when I do that. Now that they're back on the grill, I'm just gonna hit them with just a little more rub. And this time, I'm just gonna do a little more of the maple. Close this down, let them set just for a couple minutes, and then I'm gonna throw some sauce on them. All right, guys, we're back. I'm uh, gonna throw some sauce on these. The sauce we're gonna use is the Butcher Barbecue uh, Sweet Barbecue Sauce. Uh, you can see they got maybe just a little dark on me, but we're just gonna go ahead and put a light coat of sauce on both sides. Okay, it's gonna be good. We're gonna throw them right back on the barrel. Close her down and it's, it's as hot as this thing's running, it's only gonna take uh, probably about two minutes to set that sauce. So when we're cutting into these, we will pick back up. All right, guys, we are back. Uh, these ribs are done. Uh, put them back on, let them, you know, let, and I let that sauce set for just probably about two minutes, but there's the final product. Um, these ribs look really, really, really good. If anything, they might've got a little dark on me, but uh, anyways, cook time, uh, this cook time uh, was about two hours a day. Um, we did one hour meat side down, or one hour bone side down, half hour uh, bone up, and then about 20 minutes in the foil, and then another five minutes to sauce and set and stuff. And here's a finished product, probe tender, uh, internal on these were, I don't know, 
anywhere from 200 to 206 depending on where you check them so let's go ahead cut one of these racks up and see how they taste if you're wondering where i got this disposable cutting board from i'll leave the link this is right off of butcher barbecue's webpage as well all right let's go ahead and do a taste test i'll give you a quick peek at one real quick uh good looking rib uh, nice and moist feels tender as hell Mm. That's a that's a really good eating rib. I think I could have went a little heavier um, on with the rubs, but it's all taste preference. Uh, I prefer a little more rub on my you know on my meat. But all in all, all them products from Butcher Barbecue on these ribs are absolutely fantastic. The combination of the honey and the maple on there, uh, and then paired with the uh, you know the, you know the sweet barbecue sauce at the end, really does make for a nice pairing. Uh, hot and fast ribs. These are done in like I said, these are done in about two hours. Um, it, and heck, I like these better than anything you're gonna cook low and slow, to be honest with you. Uh, if you don't buy into the hot and fast game, then don't cook them hot and fast, cook them low and slow. I mean, I, I could do low and slow on that can too, uh, but I just think the flavor you get um, when you get that, you know, when you get that fat and the, you know, when the meat sizzling and popping, the flavor you get from that is just next to none. So, now besides that, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. I uh, hope this video was helpful and informative. And uh, ah, a bunch of bugs out here. Sorry about that. And uh, got a bunch of barbecue sauce in my leg in the process, but. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Uh, hopefully it's not another three months. Hopefully you start seeing videos from me again, at least a few months. So besides that, you guys and girls have a good day. Thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next video.